this. What a lovely voice that person has. Yes. I want to be the voice that does all of these things. Do you understand? <laughs> so um, welcome everybody to the Fitchburg Chambers Marketing Mission. This is our monthly um, event. It's typically a webinar, but we decided to do a meeting um, so that people can talk with us if they would like to or, or turn on their cameras if they would like to feel free to do so um, we like to see your smiling faces uh, we will be continuing the marketing mission through the end of 2021 we did take a couple months break because people did not want to sit on a zoom during the summer apparently so um, that was my bad but what? I know <laughs> it's so weird um, but we're excited to continue this on um, so that people can view it whenever they want. We do record it and we do put it on our YouTube channel. You can also find it in our newsletter. Um, so if you're not getting our newsletter, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to add you to our newsletter so that you can see what kind of events we have coming up, different community things that are happening and all that kind of fun stuff. So um, this uh, webinar is specifically every month um, on this Tuesday. And uh, we, have, we connect you with industry professionals in marketing so that you can learn something new about you know, social media. It could be advertising. It could be like today, web design, many different um, topics that we like to try to keep a range of. So hopefully you'll learn something today um, from Tara. Uh, and we have a few events that are coming up that I want to just um, put in your ears so that you guys can put those on the calendar. Um, we have next Monday, or sorry, no, let's begin with Jazz at Five starts this week at McKee Farms Park. Um, it's an outdoor concert. Um, it used to be held downtown, but has now made its home into Fitchburg at McKee Farms Park. So we're excited to ha have them and welcome them. They will be here from uh, the 11th. It'll be every Wednesday from the 11th until September 8th. And it's from five until eight. So. Um, please feel free to come down for a free concert. It's outside. Um, it's just super fun. Food trucks and drink trucks and all that kind of stuff. So uh, then we have uh, Concerts at McKee, which is put on by us. I am so honored to be able to plan this wonderful event for our community. Um, Concerts at McKee is the third Monday of every month. August is our last month. And it also happens to be two days before my birthday. So if you would like to celebrate my birthday on Monday, August 16th. Please feel free to come down to Concerts at McKee. We have Los Chechos, which is gonna be amazing. Um, they're a Latin band. Uh, they're super fun. They'll have you on your feet. Uh, so come down then. That will be from six until 8.30. Uh, we have a youth band from at six o'clock with Madison Music Foundry. And then um, we switch over to the headliner. We also have the Agora Art Fair that's coming up on August 21st. It's on Saturday, held here at the Agora Pavilion. Uh, well, actually, all of East Cheryl Parkway. I am very, I'm very angelic right now. Um, so maybe I need to sit back a little bit. Um, so it takes up all of East Cheryl Parkway, and it's super fun. Um, there's lots of different artists here. It's full, I believe. The artists are all full this year, again, which we're very grateful for. You'll find me at the beer tent, not drinking, but serving beer. Maybe I'll have one. We'll see. Um, but I'm serving beer. So please come see me at the uh, beer tent here at the Agora Art Fair. And I'm happy to serve you a beer if you would like a beer to walk around and see the artists. Uh, that will be from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. And last but not least, we also have Fitchburg Biz Outdoors, which is our chamber um, networking event. Uh, we are holding it outdoors during the summer months for now um, until people continue to get vaccinated. Um, we want people to remain safe and feel safe coming to our networking events. So uh, please come to our next one, which will be held at the Great Dane on the patio. Um, it's right outside, beautiful space um, to hang out and network and get to know some of your chamber, fellow chamber members. Um, if you are not a member, you can still come um, members are $10, non-members are $20. With that is included a free drink and appetizers. So um, it's my way of getting people to register and commit to showing up. So <laughs> um, please come on uh, August 25th and it's from four until 6 p.m. 
Sometimes we stick, alert, stick around a little bit afterwards because we get those really good conversations going. So feel free to stick around afterwards. Six is not a hard cutoff time. So feel free to come on down. That is all I have um, for upcoming events. So if you're interested in joining the chamber and you're not a chamber member, please feel free to reach out to me. My name is Brandon Rounds and I'm the membership and events uh, manager. So please uh, reach out to me and I'm happy to talk to you about membership um, and getting involved in the Pittsburgh Chamber. So with that, I will move it over to Nicole, who is our sponsor for Marketing Mission. Well, she is not specifically, but Spectrum reaches, um, and she would like to say a few words, but I am going to share my screen quick because she would like me to do that. All right. You can see it? Yes. Thank you. So good Perfect. morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Brandon. It's great to be back. I've enjoyed um, these sessions. I think I started joining in March and everyone has been, you know, very fabulous and informative. And I know today's with the lovely and talented Tara Ingalls will be just the same. Um, so I just want to say Spectrum Reach uh, is the advertising and marketing side of, of Charter Communications. So we work with uh, local and regional businesses on their marketing, whether it's uh, from television to internet, promotions, marketing, um, we can do it all. So I'd encourage you to, to link in with me. I'll put my LinkedIn comment or uh, profile on uh, in the chat in just a few minutes here. And then before we kick it over to Tara, I would encourage you to mark down September 14th because that is the next marketing mission session. And not only will I be sponsoring it, um, but I will also be the presenter. So we are going to be delving into and doing an in-depth video marketing course, uh, talking about using video to in your marketing and for your business. And everyone that attends will get a code for a, to create a free 30 second video. That video could be uh, in your email marketing and your social online. If you want to do television, you can do that. But um, I would highly encourage you guys to check that out September 14th. Again, the same 10 to 1045 time frame. And you'll get to see me. I don't know if I'm working from home that week. So you either get to see one of my mom's cool masks or you get to see my actual face. But we'll delve into video marketing. Um, so I look forward to chatting with you. And next, I'm going to turn it over to Tara. I know uh, she and I worked on a, a big project last year with score madison and again very talented in her group over at tingles design um, is definitely a true asset to small businesses in our market so without further ado tara all right brandon do you have anything else before i jump in i do want to um let you guys know that if you have any questions feel free to put those in the chat or in the q a um, and that we can answer those throughout since this is a meeting we can answer through those throughout, and then um, we could also answer them at the end. So if you have questions throughout, just let us know. Sure. All right. So let me just get this there so everyone can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up. All right, cool. So <laughs> yeah, so Brandon and I had uh, planned to do this a um, couple of months ago, and then um, we, we checked um, registrations and they and they weren't very high so we decided to to leverage time and um, do it a little bit later so um, just a little bit of information about me um, for those that don't know who tingles is we um, are a graphic design and website development company we work with startups nonprofits and we're also a really great resource for larger companies um, that are looking to outsource their business because they want to lower their overhead at, or if they don't have a designer, or design needs all year round were really great in that uh, arena as well. Um, we've been in business for 21 years. COVID really shined a damper on our 20th anniversary last year, but uh, that's okay. Um, we decided to make the best of it and we're doing, I'm gonna be doing something later this fall um, to kind of celebrate that milestone just because it's kind of a big one. Uh, we've serviced over 1,200 clients. We've built hundreds of websites. Um, one of the things I'm really proud of is that we offer our design team 48 hours a year or more of uh, professional development time to keep their skills polished and enhance their skills. That really keeps them keen on trends, especially website trends and things that are coming down the pipeline. We do offer five-day turnaround on website design. People are like, what? 
but we do. Um, it, even if it's WordPress, we do offer you the initial design concept of your homepage within five business days. It's one of our claim to fames. We're really proud of that. And we've also been recognized by In uh, Business Magazine Executive Choice Award as best web developer for the last six years running. So I'm pretty proud of that as well when it comes to website design. So there are a million, as as you all probably know, if you've ever been tasked when try, you know, tasked with trying to figure out where do we go next with our word with our website design. This is just a small sampling of website design builders that are available than in the do it yourself sphere and um, there there's just dozens of options and that's not even including proprietary design, which is the last thing listed here, which is basically design website design builders that a company has basically built um, themselves to help get people online. That's pretty rare nowadays, but it, it there I'm still getting a lot of uh, a designer or a lot of clients that come to me and say, oh, I'm in this proprietary website builder and I can't do this or I can't do that. So they, they're still out there, even though there are a lot of these do-it-yourself kind of builders. The, the best thing that I could say is to try to reach out to a professional that's been doing it a while. Like I said, I've been designing and building. I've been doing website design for probably more like 17 years, um, but I've been doing it a long time and I have a lot of, like you'll see, I've got a lot of advice when it comes to choosing a platform, which we'll go over. Um, most companies will provide an initial consult for free. So if you just have general questions, you can, you can do that. So, so the purpose of today's call is going to be talking about these two platforms, mainly because it's what I offer and I'm experienced in, but also like some background on how Tingles came to be a web designer. Back in the early 2000s, we were doing everything by hand. We were developing websites in HTML, then PHP came out, which helped websites be a little more dynamic. And then we started offering WordPress. And uh, in around 2018, 19, I was getting a lot of startups and nonprofits needing a low cost, I just need a website up solution. And so I tasked my design team to go out and do research on a lot of these a lot of these different Wix, Weebly, GoDaddy builders, these really fly by night, not fly by night, but like drag and drop builders. And so I tasked everybody to spend 20 hours of professional development. They were all, they all picked a platform and ultimately we ended up choosing Squarespace. And I can talk a lot about Squarespace, but um, what I want to more focus on is five questions that in general you can use to approach really any website project. I've got a lot of blogs about Squarespace design in my blog that I think one of the most recent one is Squarespace the right platform for me and it asks you specific questions about about what you might be looking for and then answers them in the in the vein of Squarespace. For this presentation, like I said, I can't really do a comparison on all of these because it's been three years since we did anything with Wix, for example, and I know that they've come a long way. So that might still be an option for you. I'm also here to tell you that I'm not getting a kickback from any of these website builders to give you advice on going one way or the other. Um, but my firm specifically works with WordPress and Squarespace as our two main products or, or platforms. Um, a funny thing that we did with Wix was they were advertising, you can get a website up in an hour. And we're like, no, you can't. Well, we're going to test that. So everybody in our office was tasked within 60 minutes to see how far they could get using Wix Builder. And the funny enough, the person who got the farthest was our office manager who had no web knowledge at all. And I think that's because she was more, um, she was less picky in how the site design looked and just wanted to get it up and, you know, get it up and functioning. Whereas my design team was like, I want it to look pretty and I want it to have the logo and the colors and things like that. So I think like when it comes to Wix, especially, um, I don't think their advertising is <laughs> really built towards like a designer per se. It's more for a non-designer, which may be the right, you know, the right thing for you. So Okay, so let's get started. So some of the things, so the five things that we're going to talk about, one is price, functionality, um, content editor, customization of the templates, and then customer support are the five that we're going to talk about. So, so as far as price is concerned, price is the question I get 
the most. And, and it's always going to be, I think, the biggest factor when choosing what platform you want to go with. And um, I found this graphic, which I think is kind of helpful to give you a general idea of maybe the four different options when it comes to price. So do it yourself. I'm not sure what people's level are in website design that are on this call, but you know, do it yourself has become a lot more popular because a lot of people coming into the marketplace are younger. They're not afraid of technology. They are willing to give it a shot and run with it. So obviously do it yourself is going to be a lot less expensive. Um, it's great for beginners, but it, you know, the customization is going to have limited, some limitations to it. The second one is agency. So agency to me is like full-blown agency, something like Hebing Group or Powder Keg, these like larger agencies that do not only web design, but they do media buying or they do, you know, um, like larger scale campaigns and things like that. So they're saying that, you know, their websites are going to be at least 10,000 or more. Tingles is kind of a sweet spot between an agency and a freelancer, because I feel like we have freelancer based pricing, but we also have agency level quality when it comes to actual design and things like that. So, um, you know, you're going to get more functionality. You're going to get people who understand code and building websites in code. And then there's a hybrid. I don't really know what they consider a hybrid. I think that's like a do it yourself, but then maybe bringing a coder in to do functionality based website stuff, like maybe connecting it to a third party, things like that. I think most people I find are in the first three buckets. Um, but, you know, again, price is going to be something that you'll want to consider. So when it comes to price of a website, there's basically three different elements to get you up and running. You've got a website domain, which is the www address. You've got hosting of the website, which is ultimately a server where the website lives online. And then you have um, uh, the design of the website or ongoing design costs as it pertains to the platform that you choose. So some of them will let you get up and running for free, but you pay an ongoing monthly fee to use their website design builder and things like that. Whereas if you're working with an outsized designer, you might have an upfront cost and then you have no cost moving forward except for the actual hosting of the website. Domain registration is going to run anywhere between $10 and $30 a year. Anything more than that, and you're paying for something you don't need, in my opinion. Um, GoDaddy, I know, is probably the number one registrar for domain registration, but by the time you get through the checkout process, you're paying for insurance and um, all these things that I, as long as you own your domain and you maintain it, you don't really need those kinds of insurance policies and things like that. I use a domain registrar called enom, E-N-O-M dot com. And I feel like it's just really intuitive and you can get through the checkout. You can also set up email through them. And um, they're like my dedicated domain registrar service. As far as hosting is concerned, this can really run the gamut as it, as it comes to like, you know, hosting a website because really it's, Hosting is based on a, a lot of different things um, and not all hosting companies are created equal. So you might spend between 25 and you could spend upwards of $100. At my firm, WordPress websites started around $45, $50 a month, mainly because of how big the WordPress product itself is. You have to download a software essentially to build the website. So Squarespace is $14 a month. If you do their individual plan, if you do their business plan, I think it's $25 a month. Um, so that, you know, huge difference in hosting there and Squarespace is nice because you can get the domain, the hosting and the website design all in one platform, um, which was for us a nice one stop shop for our clients that just want one bill to pay and not have to go to multiple vendors. I would say as far as price is concerned, you know, avoid getting a platform that has way more robust things that you don't need um, when it comes to website design determining what functionality you need for your website is key in determining what you need when it comes to hosting. And a lot of websites offer a lot of bells and whistles that you don't need, um, you know, or, or you pay for upfront that you never end up using. Um, look for a, a platform that allows you to build upon what you might need in the future. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second when it comes to functionality. 
All right, so functionality of a website design, you want a website design platform that is going to grow with your company. So what you might need now might not be where you expect the company to be three or even five years from now. I would say if you can find a web solution that can get you through the next five years of your business, that's probably a winner. So pre-planning for website design is something my firm spends a lot of time on and determining what do you want the website to do for you? So do you want it to sell products? share company information? Do you want it to display artwork? Do you plan to blog a lot? Are you just using your website to collect sales leads? Do you need videos? All that stuff. So we do a huge kickoff meeting before we start even choosing a platform because it's really an, important for me to determine and get them in. I use the analogy of a car a lot. Like, you know, all cars have four wheels and a steering wheel, but do you need power windows? Do you need a big tailgate? Do you need a rack on the top for your kayaks? You know, so when you're thinking about buying a car, it's kind of the same thing. What functions do I need? What, what pieces of what upgrades do I need um, now? And, you know, like I said, three to or five years from now, you may, maybe you need like a password protected area for future membership or, or for clients to log in, stuff like that. Um, most website companies or most, most platforms have form builders, things like that, that, that can give you contact forms, Google maps, stuff that used to be extra is now built into a lot of these, um, platforms, but form, um, submission for me, one of the things I was trying to do with my company in 2020, 2020, when things were slower, was trying to streamline the process for my lead generation. So when a person comes to my website and they fill out a form, is there a way for that form to auto-populate to a couple different places? Can it go to my CRM, which is my customer relation manager? Can it automatically post to constant contact so I don't have to put those emails in later? Um, can it be sent to multiple people? Can it post to a database? So again, planning how that lead generation is going to function, um, again, as part of, 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 of our pre-planning to make sure that we get you in the right platform. So content editors is a big one. And this is something that I always ask my clients, like, do you want to be able to edit your website? And everyone says, yes, everyone says yes, whether they want to do it or not, they say yes. And when I say like, you know, people are like, how easy is it to edit my website? Well, ease of use depends highly on your skill set. If you struggle with Gmail, Microsoft Office, and you browse the web only occasionally because you don't understand it, you might want to hire somebody to completely design and manage your website for you, whether or not it has a website builder or not. Because to me, on a scale from one to five, if you're in like a one to two range, you need to be outsourcing that service and focusing your efforts on something else in your business because you will struggle way longer trying to edit simple things like a photo or a staff page than just outsourcing it to us. And even our clients that have the tools and the capability to log into their website and make their edits, send them to us because they just don't have time. They don't want to deal with it. They know it's going to take three times as long. Um, we're in the software every day, all day long. So we're going to get it done faster. Um, so, you know, again, thinking about ease of use, I'm going to give you two examples um, here. So this is a screenshot of Squarespace and how their website builder looks and functions. So can you see my cursor as it's moving around? You can't. Okay. So you'll see the content is, is got some, um, it's got blue boxes around it. So the way that WordPress builder work, or I'm um, sorry, Squarespace builder works is everything's on sections and kind of tables and column, you know, column format. So with WordPress, or, sorry, Squarespace, you simply hover over the area that you want to make an edit to, you click on it, and then it's like Microsoft Word and you're editing it just like a text box. And then up in the right-hand corner, you'll see like there's a little pencil and a duplication and an arrow that you can move sections up and down. This part of the editor allows you to change the background, change the color, move the section up and down. So it's very drag and drop. What I love about Squarespace too is compared to some of the other drag and drop builders is that it gives you the ability to put your content into boxes so that when it's mobile, the boxes stay intact. A lot of builders, you get your real, you download a template and then you get your content in there and all of a sudden things are overlapping or the photo's not aligned right anymore. 
Squarespace forces the content to be in this 12 column format and automatically will reformat itself in a mobile view. So you don't have to think about that. And that's really that's really one of the been the best things about Squarespace with 7.1. And if you're going to use Squarespace, look for a 7.1 template cuz 7.0 templates don't have this builder. And to me it's kind of even when people come to me and they're wanting me to edit their 7.0 websites, it's kind of tears my hair out because it's not as easy as the 7.1. So just a um, you know, a word of caution there. Um it also doesn't require a lot of coding knowledge. So, you know, you, you need to be, you need to understand how to like highlight text where it says a home renovation there and be able to link that away or link it to another page in the site. And the tutorials on Squarespace are, are pretty phenomenal, phenomenal. This is a screenshot of our WordPress product. And if you don't take anything from this presentation, please understand and take away that WordPress is like saying I own a car like there are different ways of building WordPress it is incredible how many different ways there is to build a WordPress product and they're not all created e e equal there are a lot of template based WordPress sites there are a lot of template builder WordPress builders like Elementor um, and Divi and some of those other ones and we have vetted um, Divi and Elementor and Elementor is one that we would say if you're going to if you want a page building software Elementor is going to be the, I think, the best bang for your buck. This is a screenshot of a WordPress product that we've developed called WordPress Made Simple, um, which uses something called advanced custom fields. So when you're editing a page, you're editing like it's it's pretty locked down what you can edit on purpose so that you don't add hot pink camp comic sans font by accident or you add a content piece of section or a section to a website and then things are all jagged and don't line up anymore. So you can kind of see in this screenshot where we give you some freedom, you can change the background, you can. So this is a screenshot of my staff page and where we add staff. And so you put the person's name, you put their position and then you put the, you know, the biography of the person. So it's really locked down, really easy to make those website edits. You can get in there make the edit, save the page, and you're done. We also use something called Yoast SEO, which is a plugin of WordPress um, that allows you to be able to see what the snapshot is gonna look like when someone does an actual search. So this is often overlooked, but that meta description, which is the section underneath the blue on the right there, is something you can force Google to list. So instead of taking the first sentence of the page, you can have it say something a little more salesy, like, you know, click this link to learn more about our process or your source for blah, 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 something like that. So um, Yoast SEO is a great plugin. One of the main um, things I tell people is if you are comparing WordPress between vendors, ask for a demo. It is worth your time to see a demo of what that backend is going to look like uh, for you, because again, they're not all created equal. And I opened up a WordPress website for a client and she has 86 plugins for her shopping cart. And she's like, I need someone to do an audit and determine whether I even need these plugins. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it might be easier for you to start over. <laughs> like, honestly, so plugins are something, you know, WordPress is a software program. You have to update it just like Microsoft products. You have to update WordPress and you have to update plugins. And some people don't want the hassle of that. So I would say right now we're designing, if 10 people came to me looking for a website, we're probably doing three WordPress and then seven Squarespace websites. Um, mainly because I work with small businesses and our WordPress product is a little bit more expensive, but you know, that's, um, that's again, kind of, thinking about what your goals are and what your end, end, result, end result is. All right, so customization is number four. Most website builders offer a template to start off with. And I think this is really helpful for people who are not designers who can't visually start from a blank page. I mean, I'm not even one that can really do that. And so I like Squarespace because it offers you um, at the top here, you can search for different types of websites that you might be looking for. Um, can, oops. Can you see my cursor now? Oh, you can now. Okay. So up here, you know, you can 
search for maybe your travel company and then you can look and see all the templates that have you know templates but what's cool about the 7.1 builder is you can start with a template but the builder uses like that column format like i talked about so if you get this builder let's say you get this one and you're like oh i don't really like that it's only got one image i want that image to rotate you can quickly edit that and put in an image rotator and it's really quickly and and gets you up and running here is um, responsively, which is um, what we use if we're going to be doing any template based design as it pertains to WordPress. We like to do custom WordPress design, but it is a little bit more expensive. So sometimes people are like, I found a template I like. I just need you to change all the colors to match my brand and add my logo and then build a couple template pages for me so I can build out the, web, the website myself. So we will come into responsively. These are all WordPress. Um, templates that have been vetted by WordPress and they are responsive and so they're mobile friendly and um, as long as you kind of stay within their formatting of these templates they can really save you a lot of time when it comes to building and they are drag and drop so you know again you can search by the type of business that you have and you know the other thing is sometimes you know oops sometimes you may be a business but you might go into the cleaning area or the home improvement area and see a template in there that looks cool to you just use it it doesn't matter that it's a a template that's for food and restaurant you can change all the photos and stuff like that it's really just looking for a template that meets the needs of kind of the content that you want to lay out and whether it has those section builders and things like that um coding is tricky coding is hard and it's not something that you want to be doing if you're not experienced with it. So that's why templates can be really nice and quick and easy and get you up and running um, a little bit more quickly. So the last thing that I, I think is important is customer support. So a lot of website builders have chat features. They have extensive blogs that have searchable keyword content in them. Squarespace has something called, um, what's it called? No, I don't know if I remember. Um, I think it's called circle or something like that, where for a monthly fee, you can get unlimited support um, talking to an actual developer. So, you know, you can send them screenshots and say, oh, I just can't get it to do this that I want. There's also a lot of developers that are part of that support that have come up with custom pieces of code that you can literally drag and drop. So let's say you want a button to roll over a certain way they will show you what it looks like and then literally give you the code to dump into dump into Squarespace so that it becomes available to you. And the same with WordPress too. Um, the other thing that I like about um, customer support is after the site's built, like do they offer any kind of customer support after the website's done if there's an update to WordPress or an update to Squarespace, uh, you know, that changes the look of, and feel of your site? Like do they offer ongoing support? And whether also is that included in your hosting or is that do you have to pay extra for that? Um, Squarespace offers um, some analytics that I think are kind of user friendly. Of course, Google uh, Analytics can be added to any website pretty easily. Um, but uh, Squarespace has some really neat digestible stats because Google Analytics can be really can be like a rabbit hole. Um, so my clients like some of um, the analytics that Squarespace offers. It tells you how many visitors had, how many, what's your most popular pages, where are people searching, you know, from and coming to your website too. Um, I, I kind of like that. Um, the other thing that I didn't talk about with Squarespace as it pertains to functionality is Squarespace has um, commerce, so you can have shopping on there. It has email marketing built into it, and it also has a customer relation manager built into it. So these are all features that if you don't have that when you start your business, not only can you get domain hosting and website building, but you can get some of these other features built in there. It's also very user friendly with Zapier, 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 if anyone has used that, which is an online service that connects different web services. So let's say, for example, like I said, you want an email submission, an email form to automatically populate to QuickBooks, for example, you can set that up with, with Squarespace, which is pretty cool. Whereas WordPress, you're going to have to download a plugin and get it connected that way. So that that's my presentation. Um, I really whipped through that fast in 25 minutes, but I noticed there's a question um, 
Um, I am offering anyone who's on the call today, um, if you go to meetingwithtara.com, you can do a free phone or Zoom consult with me and just get right on my calendar. Just put in the note section that you were part of this um, presentation and I can, um, and I'd be happy to walk through your site, answer any questions that you have or anything specific that I didn't cover here that you don't want to ask, um, you know, in this presentation. Um, so I'll end the show. Um, one of the questions that came up was, um, how easy is it to know in Squarespace whether or not it's a 7.1? And I'll actually show you that. So under templates, if you click on if you click on it and preview it, oh no, where is it now? Hang on a minute, they changed it. It used to like when you hovered over it, it would say whether or not. I will say you have to dig down real deep to find a 7.0 because I think all of these are. Yeah, it's not telling me. Um, I will say though, when you it's weird I can't like filter. You used to be able to filter over here under type. So sorry, I don't have the answer to this. Um, so when I go to Squarespace um, and I create a website, once I've downloaded the template, I click on settings. Oh my God, where is it now? Is it under advanced? It's not showing me anymore now. It used to be right here. It used to say what the, maybe it's under help. Oh, here it is right here. So it tells you right here under the help menu what version it is, but that doesn't tell me whether or not as I'm searching, I can download. What I would recommend you do is do a Google search, you know, um, 7.1 versus 7.0. And it'll tell you right here, um, so in 7.0, all templates are customizable, but there's unique styling rules and features. So you can go from 7.0 to 7.1, but you can't go back, I think is one, one problem. But there was a, a list. So here, right here, here's the differences between the two. And then there was, there was a list of all the templates that were 7.1. Oh, sorry, I don't have the answer to this. Here, so top Squarespace 7.1 templates to get started. So, I mean, these are the, these are all 7.1s. None of Paloma I've used before. The thing with these templates, and you'll, if you start working with Squarespace, you'll realize really quickly that it doesn't really matter what template you start with, because let me show you why. Um, <clears throat> you can start with a template if you like the fonts and things, but that really only saves you time in the design of the website. Um, so let's say, for example, I want to create a website. I'm going to show you how quickly this you can get started with this. And let's say I like this template, so I can start with this. So like I said, it, it's got all the design, it's got all the fonts and things, and even under pages, it's got all the pages built out for you. You can obviously change this to um, services, and then you can change this to um, you know, team, you know, whatever you want to do there. So when you're like, oh, I, I don't really like this font anymore, you go back to design and then site design, and it, it gives you the ability to change fonts like in an instant. So you could say, you know what, I don't like this font pack, I'm gonna switch it. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one. And it changes 
everything site-wide. It changes your header, your body tags, um, it changes the heading sizes. So you can literally like play around here and pick one that you like. And even if you pick one that you like, you can customize it even further by coming into the headings and being like, oh, I want my headings really big and I want the letters spaced. So you can get really crazy here. Um, and then you simply just save it and it saves it across all the platforms. So the builder, so let's you get, let's say you get back to the builder under pages and you're like, I wanna add a new page and I'm gonna start with a blank page. And then you're gonna wanna edit that blank page and you wanna add a section. Look at all these cool pre-built section builders that are already there. Sorry, this looks like crap now because I've done all the fun stuff. Um, but there's all these like pre-made builders, you know, built templates that are already there. And you could do quotes, you could do text blocks. So they're already pre-built and you can come in here and pick one. Okay, this looks really bad now. Let me go back. There we go. And you, you know, again, as you're editing this, hopefully it's, I'm not going way too fast, but you hover over it, change your text. Let's say you want to add another section down here. Here's where you can make the section colors bigger, you can change the background colors. And these are all customizable. So you don't have to go with black and white. You can put in colors here. Um, this is a really cool trick I learned. So under colors, if you wanna edit your palette, you wanna choose a color. Let's say you have a logo. So you've got, let's spectrum here. Oops. So I'm gonna take that logo and I'm going to drag and drop that, or I'm gonna choose from image, and I'm gonna drag and drop that Spectrum logo right here. And now it's created a color palette for me based on that logo. So you've got your black, your, your blue, you've got a little, this little teal color doesn't look like that's come up, but you could easily come in and you know pick a teal color that kind of matches that little blue arrow. And then once you save that out, all of your sections now, are all changed into that color palette. Here's your button, font colors, stuff like that. So it's just really intuitive. And that's why I'm saying like, you could start with a template, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you, Cause you can build it out however you want. Um, another question, is there an easy way to connect Square e-commerce to a Squarespace? Yeah, so that's a common misconception is that Square and Squarespace are the same company, they're not. But you can integrate Square into under payments. You can connect Square here. So you could accept payments and use your Square here or Stripe or PayPal or whatever you want. We built 34 websites in 2020 using Squarespace, which is the most I've ever built in my career. And I would say the average cost of those websites was about $2,500. So really inexpensive. It doesn't take us long at all. And now it takes us even less time because we're so proficient in the software. Um, so could you do it yourself? Absolutely. But maybe that $2,500 might be better spent doing your business or lead gen or whatever. Um, we're able to do website design so much faster um, than ever before. So it's been a great tool. Any other questions? I'm not seeing any. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit with you um, about about this. Again, like it's it's a, it's a it's a really tricky world to navigate because there are so many options, and even again, like choosing two choosing between two web developers can be really tricky um, because every proposal is going to look good and every proposal is going to probably meet the needs of your company. Um, I would just be very vigilant about asking questions, asking for demos. I would also ask for the last three websites they've built and testimonials to talk 
either testimonials or phone number and email to talk to those clients. You're going to get a lot of information on how that process went, whether they were happy, what should you avoid or be aware of. Um, I always include that with my proposals and um, links to those websites so that people can see. Um, and it's a learning experience. You know, I always want to know what went well, what didn't go well, what could we improve on. Um, but those are those are my tips and kind of choosing your next platform. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm a master at um, my space building. Mm. Yeah. Is that I even still coding? You know, what's funny is it's still up. Like we were talking about MySpace as a team and one of my designers was literally able to pull up her MySpace account, like using, oh my gosh. there's something called the Wayback Machine. So if you search Wayback Machine, it's an, it's the ability to go back in time and look at your website at a certain point in history. And it's very cool. We use it a ton because people are like, my website went down and I don't know who built it. So we use it a lot to like go back in time. Um, but she was able to put like some things were broken and stuff, but it was so funny to like, look at Cause I never had one. So I don't know. I don't know much about it, but it was so funny to like, look at her as an, you know, really early entry level web designer, like how she was able to modify it and customize it and weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my first website was hand coded it and had a hula girl on it. And when you hovered over her, she would go like this. It was very cool. It was very cool. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, you are. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, yeah, and if any of you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Tara. Um, Tara is a long time Fitchburg Chamber member. So um, we forward on a lot of questions and stuff to Tara. So yeah, She's always available. Awesome. Cool. Well, cool. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day. And um, looking forward to see you guys in person, maybe soon. Yeah, we're we're hopefully planning on doing um, business before nine again, starting in October. So, Yay! Yeah, so that's the plan. Um, as long nice. as things keep going well. So yeah, awesome, awesome. One, well, thanks everybody. One month at a time. One I month know. at a time, right? That's all we yep. have. Yep. Yeah. All, all right, right well, guys. Have you. a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.